and welcome back. This is Liverpool Today with me, Emily Bonner. A group of social workers have arrived in Liverpool after a 100-mile march to issue the call to boot out austerity. On the 19th of April, the crowd set off from Birmingham on a seven-day walk to arrive in the city the day before the British Association of Social Workers hold their annual general meeting. Their aim is to highlight the impact of government cuts by walking together with service users and carers and hearing accounts of how austerity has impacted on people's lives along the way. National March, led by the British Association of Social Workers, began in Birmingham and the group went on to Wolverhampton, Stafford, Stoke, Sandbach, Northwich and Runcombe, finally ending up at the Pierhead in Liverpool. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn made a phone call of support along the way and the group made visits to food banks and social care provisions under threat. We've been hearing from people that we've met about people are dying because of austerity. Um, we met a member of uh, Disabled People Against Cuts on Wednesday, on Wednesday night who said basically the sense is you work or you die. So things are as drastic as that. So austerity has to be brought to an end and we think one way that, to help that to happen is to draw attention to it and to draw attention to the impact of it by hearing people's stories about it and for us to do all we can as the, as the professional association of social workers to broadcast these stories and to let people know about it. It's blaming the poor really for the financial crisis which was caused by bankers and so on and um, so therefore poor people's benefits have been reduced, sanctions have been introduced, we've been meeting people running food banks, we met a guy running the Runcorn food bank yesterday who was telling me about the increase of the use of the food bank, this is Victorian charity basically, where people who are sanctioned so they're given no money whatsoever for six weeks or more and they have to go and use food banks. What would happen if those people like Colin and Runcorn didn't set up a food bank? What would happen to those people? Well, I guess they'd just starve. How can that be okay in the 21st century? The march's penultimate stop was in Speak at the Leeson Project, a community-based mental health resource centre. Bev's been going to the centre on and off for 12 years. We've really needed support because um, we just don't know where to start. And the staff's time, as I say, are taken up a lot with making either making phone calls or filling in forms for us because that's the help that we need as well. So it, it really is a struggle for both the service users and the staff because in the past we used to have a lot more staff here but the numbers have been cut now. Well I think social workers are, are, are in some senses in a very privileged position because the, the very nature of our job means that we have daily contact with some of the most vulnerable people who are suffering the most under austerity. So if somebody has a responsibility to speak out and tell the truth about what austerity means, to speak truth to power, to tell government what really is happening, I think that is something that social workers have a moral responsibility to do. So the march is partly about highlighting that, telling the truth about what austerity is, telling the government that actually you are leaving vulnerable people in desperate, desperate circumstances. and. As social workers, we're always looking for alliances with service users and with anybody else, and, and we throw ourselves into the campaign to, to reverse the cuts, to stop the privatisation, and to end uh, the, the austerity policies that we've had for, for too long without any gains. Emily Bonner, Liverpool Today.